Hello, this is RV Vagabond Jerry, and I have just completed driving in my motor home 28 days through Canada. As far east as Winnipeg and as far west as Dawson City, Yukon. And I made a list of things that I found that were different in Canada versus the United States, specifically in traveling. These are just specific things that I found myself. These are not general rules. This is just what I have noticed. And I thought I would share them with you. Now first, driving across Canada, you will not see interstate quality highways like they have in the United States, except a bit in the large cities. Generally, they are one lane in each direction, some places two lanes in each direction, in some roads there are three lanes with the second lane for an occasional passing lane. And since they're not interstate type highways, they are not limited access, which means that there's going to be intersections in the highway and red lights and stop signs on occasion. So you can be driving along at 70 miles an hour and you will find that all of a sudden you're looking at a stop sign. <laughs> and also I noticed that there are not many truck stops. They just don't have the big truck stops like we have in the United States. And there are not very many rest stops except on the Alaska Highway. Alaska Highway has a lot of rest stops. However, on every single one of those rest stops, there will be a no overnight parking sign. You don't find that much in the States. In Alaska, you never see an overnight parking sign at a rest stop. So it is kind of amazing that Canada has spent so much money building these rest stops and then put a sign saying limited parking. <laughs> I also noticed a lot of 18-wheeler trucks where the cab of the truck is pulling two full-length trailers. It's almost like a train. <laughs> and I don't remember seeing that anywhere in the States. I don't know if it's illegal or what in the United States for an 18-wheeler truck, or as they call it, a semi, to pull two trailers of equal size, the big ones. So you gotta kind of watch out for those. Another kind of curious thing is that occasionally driving on the highway you will see a sign that says important intersection ahead. I thought that was just funny that they define some intersections as important and some not. Now diesel fuel costs approximately the same as regular gas in Canada and I think I mean, in the average I found it about a dollar 33 a liter you convert that to gallons that's about five dollars a gallon for gas or diesel compared to three to three fifty in the in the states and if you have a diesel you know you're gonna need the def fluid diesel exhaust fluid and one thing I really like about the truck stops is that you can pump the debt fluid from a pump just like the diesel fuel. But those are very hard to find in Canada. So when I was needing it, and I needed it three times, three or four times on my trip, and I had to go to an auto parts store or a Walmart sometimes has them and buy the debt fluid by the gallon which means you got to pump it into the tank yourself they have a spout where you can pour it in but <laughs> I spilled too much of it doing that it doesn't really work well so you need some kind of a pump and in the states only the truck stops have those but no truck stops in Canada except in the large cities you can find them and you have to go to a there's a website where you can go to that tells you where they are. And about the Canadian money. One of the first things you want to do when you cross the border is get some Canadian dollars. 
And I found the best place to do that is at an ATM machine with a debit card. Now, I went into one of their banks and I walked up to the teller and I said, I want to exchange American dollars for Canadian dollars. And she said, we only do that for our customers. <laughs> so they refused to do it. But I walked out into their, the ATM machine in their lobby and did it right there. Very quick and simple. You tell them how much you want in Canadian dollars and then your bank where it comes out of your debit account, they charge the exchange rate. And the exchange rate is about 25%. So something in Canada that costs a dollar is only 75 cents in American US money. And you will notice in Canada prices of everything is at least 25% more than in the States. But then, when you do the dollar conversion, you're back down to the normal price. Now, the stores in Canada really don't like to take American dollars. They will, but the ones that I went to and tried that, they said they would take American dollars, but only on a one-to-one -one basis, which means you lose your entire 25% exchange rate. And a couple things I noticed about the restaurants is that when you order iced tea, you may get it already sweetened. And some restaurants don't even have iced tea that is not sweetened. <laughs> That's just typically what they do in Canada. One time I asked her waitress, why is the tea already sweetened? And she said, oh, it would taste terrible without sugar in it. <laughs> yeah, but I like uh, sugar substitutes. So before you order iced tea, if you want it unsweetened, you better ask them. And another thing about the drinks, I always drink diet drinks simply because I don't want to be drinking sugar. But in Canada, I noticed your only choices for drinks are Diet Pepsi, Diet Coke. That's it. In the States, I prefer Diet Dr. Pepper. Sometimes Diet Root Beer, sometimes Diet This or whatever they have. In Canada, I never once found any Diet Soda other than Coke or Pepsi. And you may find in the supermarkets, some food items you're accustomed to, you may not be able to find. For example, I like to buy breakfast sandwiches by the dozen in a box from the freezer and I usually get those at Walmart and they're made by Jimmy Dean brand and then also Walmart has their own brand of breakfast sausages called Great Value. The, the Canadian Walmarts I checked several times never did they have any. I asked the people working there they said they've never done it to be there. <laughs> and packages of breakfast sausages, no. So there are certain food items you may not be able to find that you're accustomed to. And one more thing is a cell phone service. Canada has its own cell phone companies that are just for Canada. So if you have a cell phone company in the United States, when you go into Canada, you need to check and see what your coverage there is like. Now, I have Verizon, and I have unlimited internet service with Verizon, which was unlimited both in the U.S. and Canada. However, to get the cell phone, not cell phone service, but internet service in Canada, the U.S cell phone companies have to contract with a Canadian company to get it because like Verizon doesn't have their own cell phone towers in Canada and the deal they have with the Canadian company is that you get high-speed data for the first one half of one gigabyte per day and that recycles every day at midnight well I can use one half of one gigabyte up in five minutes <laughs> So I really struggled with the internet in Canada. 
and it was so slow. It, it was like slower than dial-up was in the 90s. And there were times when it was so slow that the internet service just simply gives up trying to do something and aborts the operation. Very frustrating. So what some people do when they're going to spend a lot of time in Canada is they will contract with a can Canadian cell phone company for the 30, 60, 90 days or whatever they're going to be there. And that way you can get your high speed data service. You just have to pay twice for it. You pay your U.S. company, you pay your Canadian company. I didn't do that and uh, I kind of wish I had. <laughs> now I'm going to end this with two things where I found technology in Canada better than the US. And one is in the restaurants. When you pay for your credit card, your bill, they will bring a wireless credit card machine to your table and you complete the transaction there at your dining table your credit card never leaves your hand that was nice although not all restaurants have that the kind of higher upscale type restaurants will have that service and the other thing is at the gas pumps now if you have a big gas tank like I do in my motorhome the credit card limit is not going to do it and with the US and Canada every gas station has a limit of how much they'll let you buy in a single transaction with a credit card and that can vary from seventy five dollars up to the most I've seen is hundred and fifty dollars and then it cuts you off now if you want to buy more than that you go up to the person in the store and tell them you want to authorize two hundred three hundred or four hundred dollars then you co-pump your gas and then you go back into the store and redo the transaction and it's like that everywhere across the United States in Canada at some locations not all but some the gas pumps have the ability to do that authorization so that it's a single charge and you never have to go inside the store and talk to anybody that's not nearly at, at all places but the, the more modern gas stations the newer ones will have that service and that was so much more convenient than having to go into the store twice and talk to somebody <laughs> so those are just a few select things that I found that were significantly different the US and Canada that I thought I would like to share with you good day folks